I think it's almost inevitable that there will be some type of black swan event between now and then. Now, one of the things that we've seen recently is that we're seeing a lot more physical delivery off the exchanges. And the, these exchanges weren't necessarily always meant for you know, a, a delivery exchange, essentially. You know, it was mainly just for hedging. Can you share with the viewers kind of how that has changed and what that means for the market going forward? Well, this is uh, conjecture, but uh, let's say a highly educated guess. You, I look at the COMEX particularly, is, and the LBMA to a lesser degree is being um, car dealerships that display all the new cars. They're there as a um, you know big facility, a big market maker. But yeah, what they really have is they have silver on display. They don't really facilitate transactions, as you just said, Elijah, and that's key. And so when you start going into the LBMA or you take a silver off the SLV or PSLV or whatever, in other words, if you start taking silver primarily from the LBMA and or the COMEX, that's the, the that's a last resort. That's the place of last resort. Anyone that's in the silver business, even on the retail side, but particularly on the industrial side goes direct. They go direct with a refiner or a smelter or somebody that's a direct ship. They don't need to ship a bar to the COMEX to ship it back to, you know, a mint. So there's very little silver that goes on the shelves other than what can only be sold on the spot market. The rest of it's sold in various places, <clears throat> jewelries, and of course, all kinds of industrial applications. So the point is, it's drying up. It's drying up before our eyes. And if they had any way to hide it, they would. They can't. And so they're showing us that, you know, the register category keeps showing them away. The thing that's surprising to me, I guess, this time is the last couple of times I recall well, the 32, 33 million ounces. It was there for a little while, like a few weeks, to the best of my memory. And then it started building back up. And then, of course, I always ask the question, well, where's that silver? But this time, it just keeps uh, going down, down, down. I mean, it fluctuates, but mostly the trend is still down. And there doesn't seem to be any influx. So I think between what's needed for the semiconductor industry, what's needed for the solar panel industry, what's needed uh, for the industrial use on aggregate, has got silver in a pretty tight position. And what we really need is another influx of you know, committed precious metals people to buy. And I think that's coming in a different way than most people do. And I think that's going to be through the advent of the cryptocurrency world. There's a lot of silver and gold backed cryptos out there and they're going to become, there'll be more. And I think the only issue that's holding it back now is awareness. I think the awareness of gold is the ultimate stable coin. I mean, think about it. An ounce of gold is the same mass anywhere in the universe. That's stability. The U.S. dollar, which is what's called a stable coin on most of these platforms, it's a fiat currency that's going downhill over time. So if you want a standard, if you really want a stable something, that's what your stable coin would be. And it's kind of ironic because we talk about coin. And of course, gold is considered you know a lot of coinage in gold. So there's a lot ahead of us. And I think a lot of it is not only to be determined, but I think a lot of the powers that be that are kind of smug and arrogant on you know where they're going to push the new next system uh, may be a little ahead of themselves because there is a lot of resistance to what's happening. And looking at uh, towards the end of the year, what is your perspective on where metals will be? Because it seems like um, you know we're seeing you know pause by the Fed, but you're saying that interest rates still have higher to go. Can you kind of share with the viewers where you see them heading? They're high. They're going higher. They're going higher if interest rates go up. They're going higher if interest rates go down. They're going higher if interest rates just pause and stay pause for a long time. The metals are the only way out at the, at the end game. I mean, there's, there's exceptions. I mean, there's certain businesses and there's, you know, foodstuffs and there's other things. But when it comes to on the financial or monetary side, there's really, it gets to be one place to run. And that's run out of stock, run out of bonds, run out of you know, limited partnerships run out of ETFs and run into the metal. And that won't happen to the level that it happened in the past as far as um, 
awareness. I think there's a lot more awareness in my generation of why people were running medals. They understood fiat collapses, currency collapses. Today, that's not true. But people also have social media. So there's a lot of monkey see, monkey do. And when somebody's um, influencer says something about why precious metals are key at this point in time, and they never heard that story before, uh, they will likely follow on. So I still think by the end of the year, you'll have stronger prices. I think it's going to be the last quarter of this year. I think it's almost inevitable that there will be some type of black swan event between now and then. Could be, you know, computer group, could be grid down in some areas. It could be a computer hack at a money center. It could be another crypto conundrum. There's several things out there. But the main thing is the shift has gone to a pause on the precious metals investors. They're like, I'm happy, you know, I've got enough. I don't need to buy anymore. I'm hedged. I don't need more. And, and that's the place to be. I mean, you know, I've never advocated 100% in, but I have advocated everybody owns some. And we're far from that point, Elijah. It's very, very far from everybody. And once the window closes, and it's very difficult to get anything, at least at a reasonable price, uh, that's when the frenzy will actually get into uh, – probably a double parabolic. I mean, there's no such thing as a double parabolic, but what it insinuates is that you, you buying it just goes higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. Eventually it'll burn out. Uh, but at that point, if it gets to that point, and I think it will, it will be a key that the, the end is nigh. In other words, the new system better be implemented quickly because no one's trusting the dollar anymore in terms of gold price. 